G'day everyone, this is my first attempt at putting together a, a little video to show how I apply real wood veneer to amplifier cases. So please bear with me. This is the case of a, um, a Rotel RX602 receiver and as you can see I've stripped off the, uh, the vinyl wrap that was on there um, taking care to try and retain as much of the, uh, the wood underneath as I can without damaging it too badly. So it's not too bad, it's a little rough, I'll give that a bit of a sand back but a rough surface is actually quite good uh, so the glue can adhere. And there we've got my roll of veneer, um, I get this through a local cabinet maker. And this one is walnut, so I'll just roll it out now and I'll show you how I cut. Okay, so I've just laid this out again. Now you want to leave about an inch gap all the way around. So just remember, you'll be trying to match the grain to the sides to the top. So just rotate your amp cover around like this and just mark about an inch overlap. A nice steel ruler. And you want to try and start off with a nice even piece. So try and get the measurements right each side. And just mark that down. I find the width of the steel ruler is actually quite a good indicator for overlap. So I will generally use that. and a really sharp Stanley knife with a fresh blade. What I'd do is I'd start on the, the long surface first and cut down here and just try and hold the veneer down so that it doesn't flick up and split. And now the cross cut. Now what I'd do is I'd start at the outer edge and work inwards just so that you don't tear away from the direction of the grain. So just cut in, cut in this way a little bit and now you can go from the other end. Just do a light score first and then just keep going over lightly so that you don't split the grain. Two or three times will be enough to go through. And just be careful when it flicks up that you don't split it otherwise it makes it a little bit more difficult to work with. So now we have our piece. I'm going to stop the video, put all this away and move to the uh, desk. 
Okay, we're back. Um, this is just a simple trestle table I've set up with some scrap wood. Um, as it tends to be a bit of a messy process. So I've laid out the veneer. Um, I like to keep the, the curved side facing down so that um, it kind of flattens out when you do this process. So just make sure the piece is centralised in the middle and just double check, make sure you've got enough gap either side. So roughly an inch either side, just move that a little bit. Perfect. So just uh, lightly score around the case so you can get an idea of where you're going to be cutting. And just ignore the, uh, the vent cutout for now, that's the, the last thing that we'll deal with after it's all done. Just carefully lift that away. Now you're going to want to have to leave, um, I would say, about 5mm each side before you cut. So when you put the piece on, you want to have about 5mm overhanging. So we're going to do the, the top side first. So what I'll do is I'll just line that up there, roughly 5mm, just make sure it's even both ends. Doing it by eye is more than good enough. Give that a light score. In fact, you can just go ahead and cut that now. Uh, remembering just to be careful of those edges. So always cut inwards first so that you're not tearing away the edge of the veneer. And just do it lightly. Two or three times will be enough. You can hear it starting to rip. done. Nope, not quite. Sometimes a simple snap like that will be enough. <clears throat> Just moving to the other side now. Again, another 5mm gap. And just jump around the other side here. So just scoring in woods again on the edge. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing we're going to glue on is the, uh, the, the main top part there and this is the side where I'm going to apply the glue on here and just make sure you keep these lined up so that you know which way they go. I mean you can see the grain matching here. That little 5mm gap won't make much difference um, to the grain matching. You'll still be able to match it fine on the other side. So I'll just show you some of the chemicals I use. So just um, some contact adhesive, just uh, stuff from Bunnings, uh, nothing special. It's a little thick and I'll show you in a minute how I water it down just to, uh, to make it spread a little better. Make sure the wind doesn't blow away your veneer. Always a good point, otherwise you have to start again. So let's just put that down. Uh, I use xylene as the, uh, the solvent for it. 
Uh, I'll use a nice uh, flat brush, like an artist brush, and I'll just pause the video for a second. Okay, um, so just, yeah, obviously ensure it's um, the contact adhesive is well mixed to start with. They use this fairly regularly, so it's pretty well mixed. And don't be worried about the glue getting everywhere. Even when it dries, it's easy to clean off with this xylene and a, and a rag. So I'm going to put around about that much in for now. Remember, we're just doing the top portion of the cover to start with. Unfortunately, this tin is a bit hard to uh, pour, but I'm going to water that down by about 25%. Just mix it around so that it's a thinner mix. Being thinner, it just makes it a little easier to spread and gives you a little bit more time, um, particularly in the warmer weather of summer. You don't want it drying out whilst you're applying it, otherwise it will form lumps, and those lumps you'll, you'll see under the veneer. So this is around about the thickness you want. Yep, I think that's about right. Okay, I'll just pause that. Okay, just make sure you've got enough room on your bench to lay both items out. You're going to have to apply glue to both surfaces. So I'll start with the main cover first. It's always a good idea to have a rag soaked in xylene, just handy to mop up any spills. But you don't need to worry about it too much because you can always clean them up. So apply a nice thick coat. Don't worry if any dribbles down the side, you can clean that up later. And those little feathers of wood grain sticking up there from where I ripped off the veneer. Don't worry about that, that'll all be hidden under the glue anyway. Just work fairly quickly so that it doesn't lump up whilst you're applying it. These wide brushes are excellent for this sort of work. Make sure you get it all the way to the edges, otherwise your edges are going to start to lift and that's exactly what you don't want. You pay attention to the area around the vents or any other gaps too. If you see some spots that have kind of soaked up all the glue, just go over there and just wet it a little bit more because the wood itself soaks up some of the glue. I don't think it's necessary to do two full coats. Just one thick coat should be enough. And if anything does lift at the end, you can always uh, just repair that on the fly. Okay, so that one's done. We'll leave that aside. A little bit more here. I'll just come over here and now we'll do the veneer. Push that down a bit. So once again, just be careful, either use a ruler to hold everything down.
And this is quite thin veneer. Uh, I'd say it'd be about a millimetre. And you can see it sort of bubbles up a little bit, but don't worry about that. The contact glue will hold it down properly. Once again, try and work fairly quickly. I'm going to show you something, Brandon. Come. What? Just for two. Okay. Okay, so got pretty much covered. Just check the edges again. And in the other bits where you see it's soaked into the grain, just give it a little touch up and just be careful not to uh, bunch it up too much. Alright, that's going to do. So now we wait uh, about 20 minutes, depending on the weather, um, for both sides to, uh, to be touch dry. When they are touch dry, then we're going to apply them and I'll show you how to roll it out and smooth it out so that uh, it stays nice and flat. And I meant to say these two end pieces, just put them aside for now. You'll be able to um, work out how they grain match up later. So just put them aside for now. Yeah, and I've just put a little bit more thinners into here to keep the brush moist. Because uh, it'll be probably an hour or so before we'll do the other the side pieces anyway. Still not quite, still a little bit sticky, so we'll just wait a little bit longer. Okay, because this cover was particularly porous, I'm going to err on the side of caution and just put another coat of contact cement on here because it's kind of soaked up into the grain. Okay, 
I know you all love watching paint dry. That's virtually what this is. So, I'll pause it again and I'll be back. Now I meant to add, even though there are some dry patches on the veneer itself, I won't put a second coat on here because it's just too risky for damaging the veneer uh, and I think the second coat will be enough uh, on the amplifier case. Okay, another couple of tools I use um, when I'm actually applying the veneer. It's just a hard rubber roller I got from Bunnings. I can't recall what section that was from. Um, but uh, it, just, it just helps when you're trying to push the veneer down. And also just a, uh, a cork sanding block and I'll, I'll show you in a bit how I use them. Okay, now the tricky part. I'm going to be applying this veneer to the top cover. So we'll flip it over. Now don't let it make contact with the unit until you're sure it's in the right position. So you just want to line it up visually so that you've got a gap around each side. Um, and just remember it was about a five mil gap. So just sort of keep that um, approximately right with the one inch gap either side uh, of, the, of the ends as you can see here just like that so just try and keep that uh, as even as possible um, and if you start off with just a, a small gap just at the start like this and just try and get it even as possible it doesn't have to be a 5 mil gap it can be a little bit less just try and make it even so we sort of start here We've got uh, an inch or so either side and just a couple of mils of overlap is all you need. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have too much overlap here and then you end up with it not being long enough on the other side. So we'll start here and just very gently using your hand softly just lay it down like this all the way over. And you'll find it begins to adhere quite firmly. Uh, obviously you can't move it now that it's down. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do now is just to start off and gently roll. happened here is I'll need to lift this slightly so you have to be very gentle because we've got a bubble in here so I need to sort that out just bear with me okay we're back um, I managed to sort the bubble out without lifting up um, the other end there I just very gently ran over it with the roller and just be careful not to go over the edge, otherwise you're going to crack um, the veneer. And just feel lightly where you've got the gaps, so where the, um, the vent goes. Just here, just make sure you don't go through that hole. And just to apply a fair bit of pressure to it. Uh, once again, just be careful that you don't go off the edge, otherwise you'll be in all sorts of trouble. Let's get a feel for where the edge is. Come close, but don't go over. Okay, now that that's fairly much done, there's a little bit of a an issue there, I'm just going to try and roll that out, that should be fine. A bit of pressure for any bubbles um, will be okay. Any air trapped in there will just escape through the wood grain anyway, so you don't need to split it or do anything drastic to get that out. Let's kind of trust the process. 
Okay, so I've done about as much as I can do with the roller. I'm just going to get the bare cork block and once again, a fair bit of pressure up to the edge just to help push it all down properly. Now remember this part's a little bit wonky here because that's where the vent is so there's no support underneath that. It's about that wide and about this long. As you can see, it's a fairly delicate process. Um, I have gone through multiple veneers and have had to start again from scratch. So the good thing about it, if you do mess this up, you haven't ruined your amplifier cover. Just get some um, thinners on your paintbrush and you can just go underneath the veneer with your paintbrush and thinners only and just slowly peel it back, ditch the veneer um, use thinners on a rag just to clean off any excess contact cement and then you can just start again with a fresh piece of veneer so all is not lost if you mess this up um, but it's important you know to get it right if it's not right if there's something not quite right it'll look awful at the end so just start again I'm lucky I get my veneer from a local cabinet maker uh, and I buy it in bulk, I buy about two or three meters at a time and I just use walnut, um, walnut's great for everything unless someone wants something um, specific I may order something in but um, yeah generally um, try your local cabinet maker and I find the, the thin veneer is much better than something thicker you're going to find that harder to smooth down. I hope this gives some indication as to the amount of work that goes into an amplifier restoration, particularly when you're talking about the cosmetic side of things and, and the wood veneer. And the reason why fully restored units tend to cost a lot more than just an unrestored one in working condition. Okay, look, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's get that corner there. What I'm going to do now is use my trusty weight. So I'm going to turn this over like so and weight that down. And Nothing better than a 2000 watt step down transformer. That's overkill for you. Now that's why it's still in the box. Far too much for what I need. And the thing sounds like a tank when you turn it on. A great deal of noise, so nice heavy weight to hold things down and I'll probably leave that for I'd say a couple of hours before I um, bother about doing the sides. So a uh, little bit of the workshop, there's the RA602, get to get scuts redone while the cover dries, some various other bits and pieces including the, uh, the 980 Pioneer, SX980. I've just done the uh, power supply on that um, and waiting for some parts to come in. That's a, a long-term project. And here's the face of the Rotel.
By the way, excuse the, uh, the crude videoing. Um, I'm just using an old digital SLR on a small tripod that I had lying around uh, because there's no way I can do this um, single-handed, so thank you. I've just flipped this over again, it's only been about half an hour but I just wanted to do a bit of a sanity check to make sure there's no bubbles that have formed and there's a couple of little high points that I just want to roll over again. Just being conscious of course of the, um, the edge of where the vent hole is, where the cutout is for the vent and just make sure that you get those little edges. Um, if they are sticking up a little bit once we cut the vent out uh, we can address that with a bit of um, with a bit of glue, and just be conscious once again of those edges. You don't want to go over and snap the veneer, otherwise you're going to get some uh, splintering. That's pretty good. A little bit of a high spot there. Pushing that down a bit. Had a fair bit of force on this roller, that's why it's good to have a hard roller as well. But um, the danger of that is you can also easily slip and go over the edge. It just gives you a little bit more pressure than just the cork block. As long as you're careful, it's fine. just gone over the edge. Luckily it was the back edge and it's not a problem at all. It's split right on the edge which is where I'm going to cut it anyway. What you don't want to happen is to go over the edge here because you need that overhang to sit on top of the other side when you put that on there. So that's really important. The back and the front they will basically be cut right on the edge of the case. So that's not too bad. Okay, I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to turn that over again and take the weight down. Okay guys, now we're going to do the, the sides, so I've just lined them up, um, just making sure that I've got the right uh, grain matching for each side, and as you can see that's uh, absolutely perfect. And you'll notice that, that little overhang there, that's not going to really matter when we eventually glue this to there, uh, the grain will still match up to 90%. Same with this side. And just double check just to make sure you've got it around the right way that everything's matching properly. And now I've prepared a couple of um, pieces of hardwood here. I'm going to use these to, to hold the sides in place once uh, we've glued them together. And uh, just a few clamps to help that. Uh, I've added a little bit more thinners to the uh, glue mix here because it dried out over the last hour. So. That's about the consistency we want. I'll just set this up on the tripod again and we'll get to work. Okay. So yeah, once again just applying the, the glue to the to the case itself and just try not to fill the uh, the, the screw holes with the glue because you're going to have to dig all that out later so just try and keep that away from the, uh, the actual uh, case mounting holes if you can. Nice thick coat on. Paying attention particularly to the edge where it meets the other veneer. You want to make sure that there's enough glue in there so you're not going to get problems. Okay, 
that's one part done. And you just want to wipe off any excess. You don't want bulging amounts of glue hanging around the, uh, the junction between the two veneers. And just apply a nice thick coat to the veneer itself again. I want to mention as well, so the reason why I haven't trimmed the sides of this original veneer is because we need them in place so that when we're lining up these uh, side cheeks, we'll use that as a reference point. So that's really important because if we trim that off, then it's going to be a lot harder to actually put it in place. At least now what we can do is we can simply start off by making sure those edges are aligned like that and then we can just apply it up like that that's the best way to do it otherwise you'll find yourself getting into trouble and once it sticks on there uh, it's impossible to remove uh, or it's impossible to move and you have to start again and, and remove the whole lot using thinners so it's a bit of a pain so we'll let that one dry uh, I'll do the other one as well Again, just trying to keep the glue out of those holes. It's no big deal if it gets in there, you can take it out with a bit of thinners on a rag or scrape it out with a scalpel, that's fine. And by the way, I used to do this work um, on newspaper uh, on top of the, uh, of the table, but uh, I found that uh, it was more of a pain in the butt because the paper would stick to everything, so I just do it straight on, on the wood itself, and that's fine. Like I said, you can always clean that off afterwards. Okay, we'll let those dry and I'll be back soon. Okay, now that that's dried, that's touch dry, I'm going to uh, put the side cheeks on. By the way, I did apply one more coat again of the uh, contact cement just to the case side of things because um, the wood had sort of soaked up most of the glue. So I'll start with this side. Actually, I'll start with the side that you can see. So, what we've got to do is make sure that we line up. Just literally, just make sure the ends are meeting against each other there. So you're lining the grain up and just bring it forward. And you want to make sure that that edge is right down into the corner. As far as it can go. Because you don't want a gap there. Because it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. So you're right down into the corner like that. Make sure it's pushed right down before you bring the rest of it up. Just keep pushing it down and slowly bring the rest of it up, making contact with the other side. Now what you want to do now is grab, 
grab your cork block and just up and down like so and don't worry if you see it's not adhering that well I'm going to clamp that eventually you just be careful when you're moving the block up and down that you don't break the edges off I'm just trying to apply as much pressure as you can sideways and the rest of it will take care of during clamping Okay, so I'm pretty much happy with that. Now there's a little bead of glue you can see along the edge down here. Now don't worry about that because we'll be able to wipe that off once it's all dry. Um, the dried contact cement you can easily wipe off with a bit of thinners. A bit of okay, sorry about that, my battery ran out. One of the limitations of using an old school digital camera. Right. So now I've clamped this up properly, I've tried as best I can to apply even pressure all over uh, through various clamps, um, but just do it as best you can. And uh, yeah, basically uh, we will let that dry for probably an hour or so before I attempt to remove the clamps and start trimming up. So I think I'll end the video here. I'll do a separate video later on where I can show how I trim it all up and cut out the, uh, the piece for the vent and um, treat the, uh, the surface of it. So thanks for bearing with me guys. Uh, I hope this is helpful and I'll be back later.